Well, now, uh, Guinea's former dictator, Moussa Dadis Kamara, denies responsibility in a 2009 massacre. Uh, Kamara and 10 other former military and government officials stand accused over the killing of 156 people and the rape of at least 109 women by pro-junta uh, pro -pro forces at an opposition rally in Conakry Stadium in September 2009. For more insight into the events of 2009, Elsie Kepler, Associate Director of the International Justice Program, Human Rights Watch, joins me live via Skype from New York. Welcome, Ms. Kepler. Hi, thank you. Now, Mr. Kamara uh, denies these charges and actually went back home after staying in exile for a long time. Uh, how complicated is this case or how easy is it to prosecute? I, I want to start by flagging how significant the fact is that this trial is going forward at all. Um, this is a first trial of its kind in Guinea. This is the most significant uh, judicial proceeding involving human rights abuses of this nature. Um, it's a rare case like this progressing in uh, domestic courts. And the massacre in 2009 was one of the most brutal incidents in Guinea's history, in which a peaceful protest, uh, political protest, was quashed. And there was uh, a massacre that happened in the stadium, and dozens of uh, women were also uh, raped and sexually assaulted in the stadium. There has been an intense need for justice for these crimes. Um, their first commitment by the government to hold this trial was back in uh, 2009, which it communicated to the International Criminal Court. And it's been a long and winding road since and a huge step forward that the trial opened in September. Of course, this trial is complicated. The charges are complicated. You have, uh, you know, close to a dozen uh, individuals who are accused of the charges um, and are being tried together. These are um, uh, system crimes, a massacre. Mm -hmm. It's not just one murder or, yeah. or two murders, um, widespread sexual assault. Also, yeah. the reality of a cover up um, afterwards. So very complicated and complex. Um, yeah. And of course, it must be tried fairly and credibly um, with all the uh, fair trial rights uh, for all the accused. Yeah. Now, he, he, I mean, he lived in exile. He could have continued staying outside of the country, willingly came back. Uh, but he says to his defense that on that material day, he was asleep. He woke up at 11 a.m. and was told that there has been a massacre. Is that a defense enough for a person who was the leader of a country? The key here is that in a trial, any trial, but including a trial of this nature, is that the judges play the role of assessing the credibility of the information presented. So he will put forward his information. The judges will assess that information. There will be other, we expect other witnesses um, who will come forward to provide information about what happened on that day in addition to the accused. Um, you also have hundreds of victims who have joined this proceeding as civil parties in the case. They play a very significant role in the Guinean justice system. Their lawyers are participating in, in the proceedings, have asked questions, and we expect many of those victims will also take the stand. Um, obviously, as far as I understand it, there's no allegation that uh, Jadis Kamara was at the stadium, so it will involve uh, putting forward information as to linkages between where he was and the acts that were occurring and what in uh, orders, if any, he may have given or not. Um, in regard to these crimes. So that is all a matter for um, the def the lawyers to uh, unpack um, and also for the judges to ultimately assess. And the standard is uh, there shall be no conviction absent uh, guilt proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, some uh, might see this as uh, making a case for Africa being able to uh, hold their own people accountable rather than send them to The Hague, for example. Do you think this will set a precedent and probably give credibility to African judicial systems? I think wherever the most serious crimes are committed, the ideal situation is where domestic courts in the countries where the crimes were committed can and do fairly prosecute and try the crimes. 
we have seen how complicated that can be and, and how often it's not possible, which is why it is extremely important that the International Criminal Court was created and functions as a court of last resort. Guinea has taken a tremendous step forward and we're watching it very closely. It could be an important precedent. It's also worth noting that the Guinea example highlights just how difficult domestic okay. um, cases can be, given that Thank it took 13 years for this trial to get going. I really appreciate your insights, Ms. Kepler. Elsie Kepler, Associate Director of the International Justice Program, Human Rights Watch.